Great. Great. All right. Cool. Um, I guess we we should do intros again, um, as we always do. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean we're talking about Smithy by Day, so yeah, I, I guess Dean, uh, you can start us off. Um, and I, I can say our relationship. Uh, and uh, Joseph can chime in, and we'll figure it out. It's freeform jazz. Let's go. Uh, well, hi guys. My name is Dean. I'm pretty much. New to the new to the Smithy by Day crew with Renari and Jonah. Um, work in IT and avid gamer as well. So here to have the fun with the guys. Here we go. Cool. Hey, uh, I'm Fornari or Kevin. Uh, I go by my last name, which is my username. Uh, I am working on Smithy by Day with with Joseph. Uh, we'll talk about it. I know uh, Dean or Umbrella Corp from uh, some previous games I used to work on in, in that community. And uh, now he's here and it's epic. And uh, we'll kind of be bouncing off. Uh, he, he's kind of like my preferred bounce off person. So like if I ever say anything, he comes up with awesome questions, uh, comes up with topics that I don't necessarily think about or that uh, I don't like uh, publicly announce or anything. I'm like, oh yeah, we, we can expand um answer a few questions that type of thing so yeah that's what why we're here and what we're doing and uh throw it over to you joseph yeah i'm joseph or jodapon and uh i'm a developer i develop stuff in unreal well that's that's the dream <laughs> Jeez, that sounds unreal <laughs> <laughs> sorry had to <laughs> excellent um so yeah i i guess um I can just give a brief rundown of Smithy by Day. Uh, we can talk about the the article real quick. Um, and then, yeah, you can ask whatever if there's any um, any like more general topics. We can kind of focus on that. If you have specific questions, great. Um, this is uh, open to everyone, so if anyone wants to jump in, or well, I guess uh, you would know if someone's listening, but uh type in general chat for anyone listening to the recording you're always free to dm or message in the discord um and uh yeah so i, I guess um the article is probably the the biggest place to to go find uh most of the details for for smithy by day the the most concise place uh and basically i'm just going to talk about two things one why we're making a game and two kind of what the game is about uh why we're making a game um i how to say this from from previous experience yeah I, I guess i'll i'll just do a less cheesy version of the intro of the article from previous experience i've worked in uh the gaming industry for uh with an indie company for like eight ish months something like that uh i've worked in esports for a few years mostly as like marketing journalism stuff like that um and I feel like through all these experiences, kind of the the logical conclusion was, hey, I should probably start uh, try to make a make a game. I've seen a lot of a lot of the good stuff people have done, a lot of the mistakes people have done, and I feel like I'm pretty well equipped to, at the very least, do do the game design part of uh of making a game, and also like the community management and marketing um and outreach like i'm really good at communication and stuff i'm i have a journalism background so um i i really wanted to focus on that aspect and learning unreal seemed like a very daunting task for me uh to be before i even started i didn't know uh unreal was free and then i learned it was free and i'm like dude this is lit um and then i talked with joseph who um we've done some uh prior business ventures with namely we did a, an online publication was the most uh i've worked uh with him but we also did some uh uh some video editing in our college days and um i was like yo we like i have this sick game idea but um uh what do i want to say for for a different game but yeah i don't know i don't really uh, I don't really want to like share with anyone. This will like take years to do, kind of as like a hobby or anything. And he kind of he pushed and said like, you know, we we should make a game together. Like, how do you feel about like we should make a different game and then like see see how we feel after that. If we want to like keep collaborating after and like make your game or make a different game after. 
uh, and we both have like uh, a dream game or two we want to make, um, we we can do that, or we can uh, just like keep doing keep doing this or separate ways or whatever. And uh, yeah, that's kind of how it came to be. Um, we can, I guess I'll throw it over to Joseph real quick if you want to do any more background, and then we can talk specifically about Smithy by Day, and then Dean, you can ask whatever you want. Yep. Um, it was funny teaching Fenari Unreal. <laughs> just the, the tone of voice saying that I can just like tie the pearls and style it into Pokemon. <laughs> um, yeah, you're gonna do the UI, right? Yeah, I'm doing that right now. Yeah, 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 I was definitely doing the. I, dude, I, I definitely I love did. It. I love you. I hate it so much. <laughs> but um. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so, so the, the, um, the, the game, game is going to be uh, mostly UI, so I'm, I'm excited for that. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, working at, I'm working on it right now, as we speak, actually. But other than that, no, I've got nothing to add. Nice. Cool. Um, other than I'm excited to make something. Good stuff. Um, yeah, I, I think the, the only thing to add, uh, since Joseph touched on it, um, I know the, the very basics of um of unreal and uh like i have i had one i've done one line of code in my life before i started unreal which is ping i think it's ping space dash ping space dash t 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 in command prompt other than that i've never written a <laughs> um and then uh i was being extremely slow with that so now he's doing ui as well uh and i'm doing mostly um in the in the back end or like in the background uh, I'm doing most of the planning, and a big chunk of the design is me. Um, we'll we'll transition a little bit to what the game is about. So I compared it to, um, to like the the restaurant management and like mini games of Dave the Diver, plus like doing caves in um in Stardew Valley. Um, so like the the resource gathering aspect is going to be mostly Joseph. I have very little um input on the design of that that's mostly him doing that and most of the design on the uh the mini games and like the the blacksmith management is mostly my design um of course for both of these we we commute <laughs> we communicate so much dude we have so much planning um but we communicate everything back and forth and like hey what do you think of this idea or whatever there's nothing in the game uh, so, so far at least i don't know uh i haven't uh double checked the code but um there's nothing in the game that's like oh surprise like i added this thing that we didn't talk about like everything is um confirmed by by both of us mm -hmm. um and uh yeah so so uh that point basically being um both of us have input in stuff both of us just like hey double check like hey do you think this is good oh hey like optimize this or whatever um but yeah like i'm mainly the the blacksmithing side he's mainly the resource gathering side but joseph is developing and programming everything uh god bless joseph like i said in the article he's working like four to five times more than me yeah um and then yeah just just talking about the game real quick um i think the the two main things are number one you you run a blacksmithing shop and uh uh you you get customers uh they come in they <clears throat> we want to do something along the lines of this is again sorry this is all super early stages this is super subject to change this is not set in stone but we want different types of customers like hey a specific customer wants like i want a sword made out of this material with these qualities um and i want it for like between uh, like 500 to 550 silver We'll have like other customers that are more general that are like, um, hey, I just want like a weapon for like 
at most like 300 uh silver or whatever and then we also want like um mini uh, possibly like mini game specific customers like hey c uh can you sharpen my sword real quick or something like that there, there's um, a question for you fenari actually if i can just yeah, yeah. Submit. you said uh like they said that sounds like a lot of dynamic kind of um mechanics within within that like you know you get a customer who says i just want a weapon that for mm -hmm. a maximum of 300 like to me just you you sound like we're nearly hitting on a customer could ask you i want a weapon that i can use for so and so would you think that's something that might be possible because for example you might have a sword that you can have multiple uses with but you might have another weapon such as a spear let's say that could have you know a couple of the same uses mm. so you know it it would kind of you know, you, you could kind of cross, like, let's just say a, a, a sword would cost you too much to make compared to what they're willing to pay. Could you choose to, let's say, make them a spear or, a, or an axe instead? Uh, you know, gotcha. th yeah, w would that be something you might look at? or? Yeah, I, I think um, I'll, I'll also throw this to Joseph uh, after I answer this, to if he has any um, any expansion on it. But I think that'll be a big part of of the balancing i never i personally um unless you like really screw up the weapon like you you like mess up all the mini games and stuff i don't want it to wherever you're you're selling any weapon at a loss yeah um i want it like at at most i would want the challenge to be and this is this is just my vision by the way um i want it at most to be like oh like i've made one like i have one sword and like three axes sitting in my inventory and like everyone keeps asking for swords no one's asking me just for a general weapon mm -hmm. uh and then oh thank god someone's asking me for a general weapon so i can sell this sword that's worth like 300 silver and make 300 silver but i haven't been able to get rid of these axes and finally someone's asking me for like a uh, just a general weapon and i can throw an axe at them that's only worth like 150 silver but it gets rid of like something in my inventory yeah so I guess, yeah, number one, uh, on the balance side, I want it to be infrequent or pretty difficult for you to sell anything at a loss. It should never, the game shouldn't feel like a black box of like, oh, you know, I've been playing for like five days and it seems like my silver has gone from like a thousand to a thousand and fifty. Like, wh what's going on here? I'm not, I'm not sure. You, you shouldn't have to be doing a guessing game. And then thing number two, I, um, in some form or fashion, I want it to be able to, um, how to say, I want you to be able to sell, like, a variety of stuff without it feel, with, with you having some level of agency, I guess, um, and to potentially answer a different question of, like, oh, like, a customer wants, like, I, uh, uh, a, a spear to go spear fishing that's not what spears are used but like a spear to go spear fishing for example yeah. and specifically wants that i don't know yet how much we're going to go into like uh what the average customer is going to do we we do want like special customers but i don't know what like the average customer is going to request if he's just like hey just give me this buy and you like see them like come come and go like once a week or if they or if like every customer has like an individual like hey this is like the spear guy he just he just loves spears and he keeps getting spears and like like his uh lore will change like the better quality spears you give him or something like that so i don't know um yeah i can throw it over to joseph i might have said like five things you super disagree with and are like way too complicated to do and have like expand or scope but yeah uh go for it man no um the item creation and all that will be mostly you and and your design um for for my side we can kind of create any item we want as long as it fits within the parameters of the recipes so and also a big part of gathering the materials is going to be in the resource gathering pit. That's, so if you're that's like... something I wanted to hit on actually with you uh, as well. Uh, it, you're, you're working on the, the resource gathering or resource management. What can we expect from resource? What can we expect from resource gathering? Will it be going out and having to dig up iron or dig up ores, or are we looking at let's say a market UI that you could uh, avail uh, of purchasing from other vendors, let's say? Uh, you know, a supply and demand market for for basic ores that you use, and you profit from turning them into weapons or 
uh, which will uh, which will lead into my next question for you: Are we strictly looking at weapons, or because you're a smithy, or would you be looking at, let's say, jewelry such as bangles as well, like our armors? Uh, but I I know that was one question, like kind of leading into into the other. But I get what you said. First of all, was the resource management? Are we looking at just going out and finding ores, or are we looking at maybe a market to get ores to buy ores, and also obviously to profit you have to profit uh, are we looking at just solely weapons or or are we looking at let's say the likes of jewelry and armors as well for the resource gathering part you will be like mining for ores and stuff to get like your base materials that you can make uh the like for the, you can make all sorts of stuff but you can create the base items with mm -hmm. just the stuff that you go out to resource gather um, I believe for the more complicated things, there will be some sort of area where you can buy resources. Mm -hmm. Is that, is that right, Fenray? Yeah. Um, can I? I'm going to send you something. And hold on. Um. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to screenshot uh this and see if you think we're able to say this right now. Um. I cut out the the fourth thing, which is the the big the other big UI push. Um, am I able to to paraphrase what's what's written here, or should we keep that for later? You asking me or um, <laughs> no, no no I'm asking Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> it's up to you, Fener. Okay. Um. So. Um, Nothing in I'll... the current BDD I have am disagreeing with. Okay. Great. Excellent. So. Um, I, so, I'm not sharing my screen. Okay, cool. So I'm going to put this on my main screen so it doesn't look like I'm looking. Okay, cool. So, at the moment, I have... Like, the caving and anything he has in mind right now. But, so, the the first thing, uh, the first thing is, like, going out in caves. Uh, mm -hmm. Mining is going to be, like, a big thing. We have some, some ideas. We have a lot of ideas for that. I threw um one of the things I I threw out um as an example is have you ever played a Path of Exile, Dean? Very very briefly and oh okay I I, I I will just say and some many people may hate me I kind of went into that depressive stage after Diablo so I <laughs> I just kind of was like oh I I'm not arsed like I was I wanted to play it but at the same time I was like I've just played Diablo I'm just I'm not yeah. able to. <laughs> gotcha. Um, so there's this mechanic called delve in in Path of Exile where basically you have like a minecart and you go like um you go down a level and like this is level one and you can like kinda navigate around and like you only have level one enemies and resources and like you keep going down and can like navigate. So there's like a grid where there's a grid on the left, imagine, and you like you move down. Uh, or you move to that grid, and then you can, like, mine around. And then after you're done, you can stay on that same horizontal axis and still have, like, that same uh, rough, like, quality of resources and stuff or go further down. So that was kind of, like, one of the things uh, we discussed. But the, the the caving has a lot of ideas, a lot of random ideas. We'll see see what happens. But mining is going to be a big thing. We don't know what other resources are going to be there, and there's going to be enemies. That's about all that's set in stone. Other than that, uh, oh, and there's one other thing about caving we'll, I'll, I'll talk about a little bit later, mm -hmm. uh, but that's about all we have. The second thing is specifically going out to market. I don't want, like, a magic button that you, uh, that you just press and then, like, uh, resources appear. I want it to be specifically punishing where if you plan correctly at the at the start of the day so let's say your shop open or your people wake up at six and your shop opens up at eight um i want it to be like oh from six to eight you can do whatever you can plan and then like uh if you start at 6 a.m you just lock one of your characters um you lock your character's movement for for an hour uh, you get all your resources you bring them back and you've planned well and that's fine but if it's in the middle of the day and you're like, oh, I'm low on wood. Oh God! Now you now not only are you low on wood, you also uh, you're also punished by locking uh, by locking your character for an hour 
Uh, so they can't like they can't optimize the shop, tend to customers and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're down one one player a character uh, while they're getting wood. So that's the second thing is going out to market, like physically going out to market. Uh, and then number three is I want to implement some sort of traveling merchants. Like um, this is like this is the meat guy. This is the um, the herb guy. This is like the 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 fuel guy that has like different woods and. Um, uh and coal and stuff this is maybe the metal guy or something like different types of traveling merchants um that not meat. only have what's up <laughs> nice go ahead <laughs> um that have uh both like base resources but also have um like maybe some some special items like a gem or something uh that that you like you want to look out for but you can't get in the market or like is rare in caving um there is a fourth thing uh we're super not ready to talk about the the fourth way to get resources uh but yeah um that that was the first part of your question i'm gonna throw it back to joseph for for the caving part and uh any any other things he has a uh, vision for uh, and then we can answer the second part of your question the cave part is the second part of the game that is planned to develop for the kind of the second half of our schedule. Uh, the design isn't extremely fleshed out at the moment. I do have some pretty concrete ideas, um, but I haven't like written them down. <laughs> um, uh, but the the biggest part of the resource gathering that I think is a is a pillar of the design is in the worst case scenario, you you're super poor. You're all your items that you're making are just awful um you won't be able to afford any resources to make like the higher level stuff so to get yourself back off the ground uh for for like simulation for management sims that there is like a, a, a rock bottom that you can get to but there's always got to be something to get you back up off your feet and that's a pill it's not like the core center but that's like why the resource gathering needs to exist or one of the reasons it needs to exist is uh so you so you can go get those base materials but also Fenari, did you want to talk about the difficulty and like the audience we're going for yeah i i can yeah let me yeah yeah i'll just expand on that real uh a, a little part of that uh and then we can talk about difficulty after the second part of the question um or audience i guess audience and difficulty hmm. um i want it to be very difficult um for you to to completely fail and i don't think like um i don't think i want like your smithy to be ever taken away and like you just just have like a hard game over you have to restart the day or something and like you're completely screwed um so i i want it to be like you to have a little bit of punishment but um like uh like guards will take away like some resources or like tax you extra or something like that but like again like the cave system uh like he's like joseph said a big part of it is hey for free you can just go uh you can go you can like just go to a section maybe we have sections that don't even have mobs or like sections that are like super like level one mobs and like no like there's no mechanic that ever takes away your sword like your base sword or your base wand or anything um so yeah basically the the theme what one of the themes of the game is uh very hard to fail but still there's still some punishment and some challenge that we'll just kind of figure out okay and, and the second part of the question what uh i asked was on the craftable items or how far do you think you're going to go are you looking at just weapons or would you be looking at the likes of jewelry like bangles rings or armor and to that effect uh i heard i did hear you say wand are we looking at magical items as well um so uh sorry real quick uh joseph did you want to expand on the cave anymore or cover anything on caving before i answer that second part no not at the moment okay excellent so um let me ask that. Joseph, am I uh do you want to say the the three different characters we um uh we're looking at putting in the game, the three player characters? Or would you like to leave that for later? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So for we want 
basically you're you're like a small adventuring party and you have a rogue who's going to be managing the front of the shop a blacksmith who's going to be maybe like a like a warrior barbarian archetype i'm not really sure yet Mm -hmm. and then the the person that's going to be um going to be gathering resources is a uh like think of a battle mage essentially like a red mage that like uh uses like a sword and a wand and stuff Mm -hmm. a sword or staff uh kind of that type of thing and i guess this is a um uh one second okay gotcha excellent um so uh the and then the third person like kind of think a battle mage has a sword like has a wand has some cool movement mechanics but but um just think rogue uh big burly D D class uh for uh for smithing and mage and so um for the mage um i don't know how much we want to like be able to craft your own items so uh, yeah in general it would be really weird if you're like crafting swords but the only way to for you to equip like a sword on your mage is for you to buy it from the market or something so we do want to have like an aspect that you're crafting your own stuff um and so that's a little bit on how much i'll touch on the magical items and to touch a little bit more on the magical items i'm pretty sure we've we've sent this right hold on one second oh yeah yeah okay so um i'm going to gonna uh, i'm gonna send this over to you dean Mm -hmm. and you can share it on your screen or actually i can share it yeah which one which one do you think is better uh you can either share it or i can share it which uh i can i can share this yeah okay uh, i'll just kind of turn the screen over so if you want to explain it yeah Yeah. I'm waiting to whenever you you get to share your screen. Yep. Uh, bear with me. And we're gonna be focusing on the left side of that, not the right side for for my answer. Yep. So, okay, perfect, great. And one day it'll load. Okay, awesome. Oh, so you gotta um, uh, just go ahead and turn off share system audio because it I'm hearing some errors. Sorry. On my end? On uh, Brother's, I think. Uh, oh. What am I doing? So you, when you uh, share it, there's like a button that says share system audio. Oh. I should have some stuff. Yeah, because I'm hearing myself. Okay. Uh, share audio. Yeah, there you go. Okay, great. Hello? Yeah, ex- excellent, excellent. So, um... This is a a super great MF Paint drawing by yours truly, um, <laughs> on the left. Um, but specifically, so we wanted I wanted to separate uh kind of like the three characters when they're doing the the management sim uh part of their day, on the 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 shop area is like the rogues area, the the smith is uh like in his smithy area and like outside there's a furnace or something we'll figure that out and then maybe underground or like on the like the the kind of the first floor is where you see the customers and like the the bottom floor like a basement area is going to be where the mage resides and so since the mage is 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 waking up or sorry is going out at night she's probably waking up a little bit later so maybe like from 6 p.m to 10 p.m she's in the shop and then from 10 p.m to to later uh she's gathering resources um so she'll have an alchemy or uh like a whatever that area is that we'll call it we'll have like we'll just call it the mage area she'll have an enchantment table or something where you can like add properties to to your equipment uh and an alchemy station that maybe you can like we want stuff in the cave that like you can you can grab different resources and kind of combine them and see like see what happens so like two different ways to modify weapons maybe um maybe the alchemy station also makes different metals or something we're we're kind of fiddling around with that idea but kind of like kind of light in the magic i don't i don't know for now if we're going to make like um 
like a spell book and like oh yeah you just combine different things and now you have like a tornado spell or something Mm -hmm. but for right now just some light magical things like oh yeah you put like a fire property on the sword or like maybe you make like a a level two poison in the alchemy area or something like that um for the alchemy um i want there to be some sort of mini game but think like the core mechanic will be something like in skyrim where like uh you have four different ways or x different ways to to make like level one poison and you combine two different ingredients and see like oh it turns out like feathers uh one of the functions for feathers is to make level one poison and mm-hmm. then you like mess around with feathers some more and like oh it also gives like uh like a wind property or something so yeah. kind of think of that and that's kind of all i want to touch on for for the magical stuff um for different types of equipment, um, I think there's two big considerations for different types of equipment. Number one, yes, we, we will have different types of equipment. It's almost certainly not going to be just offensive weapons. Um, I do want to say there's, go- for for the rogue, at the moment, we're planning on having like a little jewel socketing thing. So um, think of the rogue as like he does dexterous things. Um, so maybe like, he does some woodworking stuff so i've researched how like arrows are made so maybe he can do like make arrows or something he he sockets jewels um i don't know how we would implement jewelry i want to do some base level jewelry the the problem i have with it is like for rings for example that would still be made by a blacksmith it would be really weird for the rogue to also make it maybe the rogue can can like use the furnace and do like some really basic blacksmithing or something i'm not really sure how that would work i don't currently like it yeah so that's kind of cons- mm, yeah yeah to touch off jewelry i think the best way and i've seen this probably in one or two other games is that you let's just say you get your hands on jewelry whether it be gems or sapphires or whatever jewelry you're going to implement i'd say you can sell them as they are just as just as gems at a base value but in order to socket them and use them, they are things that you can enchant to to give an encha- an enchantment mm-hmm. to to for sockets on on let's say armor or weapons. Yeah, I mean, granted, you you can probably have let's say a single slot available for an enchantment on a weapon, but then that weapon might have two or three extra sockets built in that you can add enchanted jewelry to give yeah. them extra enchantments or something like that. I digress a bit, but I'm saying that. You know, you can you can easily implement jewelry that you can just sell it for a base value if you just want a bit of quick money, or you can hand them off to your uh, your um your alchemist, your your mage to say here, uh, we we need enchantments on these, and you can just set you can even probably sell the jewelry with enchantments on them for extra money, but again, sure. as they are just just gems or jewelry, you know, so sure, sure. that might that might be something that uh one way to kind of get started with jewelry, I'd say, but I mean, look, you're looking at that down the line, obviously get your weapons first you know yeah 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 that that a lot of that is roughly kind of what i was thinking my only qualification slash problem i guess is i want the rogue to be crafting something so if like oh yeah like we have the most in-depth sword crafting uh smithing game you've ever seen Mm -hmm. but like everything else is like oh i found like gems and now i can put gems in the sword or something i would like different types of things that you can also craft but yeah for sure on like that that for for the baseline of that um i just got it, i just caught on what you said sorry if, sorry to interrupt again i just caught on what you said as well you're not sure if like if the if the smithy would would uh deal with jewelry per se but is is there um that for example is there other stores you can go to to interact with uh interact with define um, for example, if you have rough gems, you can go to the jeweler's shop to have him cut the gems for you to use uh, them. Oh, as... yeah, yeah, Um, I don't know. That's interesting. I I like the idea of having, like, stores that are, like, service stores or stores that, like, have a service. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, I would like most of the, I guess, mechanics to be in your in your shop or mm-hmm. make it, like, that 90% of the time. Uh, like it's real the real obvious decision is for you to do it yourself and you want to like maybe outsource just a little bit because it's like so expensive or time Mm -hmm. consuming or something or some other punishment to outsource but i i do like that idea i'm not inherently opposed to it Mm -hmm. i just my only concern is i don't want 
A, I don't want to spend a lot of time on uh, developing that, and B, I don't want it to where the player is like 50% of the time we do it in shop and then 50% of the time we just go to a store and do it. I, I don't want it to be to be like that. Yeah, yeah. I noticed that I noticed that in the shop area you have a thing that says displays. Obviously I, I'm taking that instantly as you have like dummies that you put armor you created on like as a as a presentation kind of thing. Um with that, do you think there's a property to that, for example, you'd use displays to attract customers? Um uh, sorry sorry, one second, my brain just exploded. Joseph, did you want to say something before you chimed in and then uh, I was going to say two quick things. Um, one, like Sonari said, ninety uh, percent of the game will be within the the, the blacksmith and the resource gathering cave, mm -hmm. uh, and that's because we don't we're we're careful about being too scope creepy or like planning some of the features. So we want to nail those down, mm -hmm. uh, and then at whatever point we are in the timeline, we can add uh, more mechanics and stuff. But I also wanted to clarify. That this picture that you're looking on the left is a side view, like 2D, but yep, I want to clarify that the game is going to be a, a 3D top down perspective. Mm -hmm. And uh, resource gathering, you'll have like free movement, but in the blacksmith, uh, it's kind of the restricted. So you won't have free movement, but it will still be top down 3D, and you can like move your character to the, the station to do mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Okay. Thank Thanks, you. Good. Um, for, for displays, 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 dis oh yeah, sorry, um, to, to answer a second question, the, the other part, I said there's like two main considerations, then we'll go to displays and we can go wherever you want after that. Um, the, the second part is, um, how, how feasible is it to, to make a mini game, uh, or to make mini games around the production? So like, um, I feel like when I was researching arrows, I feel like we can gamify that pretty well, make a few mini games around that and center that around like the rogue doing stuff in his own like woodworking slash shop area place. And that's fine. Swords, no problem. Like sharp stuff, spears, great, no problem. Um, shields, probably fine. Um, bows, maybe a little bit rough i'm not uh i'm not sure that might be a little bit more complicated woodworking um i don't know if i said shields probably fine. like helmets probably fine as well full like full plates of armor or like chain mail or something um chain mail is like pretty meticulous like you um from my understanding i'm sorry i might be saying some really dumb shit i know there's like buttered chain or buttressed or buttered chain mail and another type and riveted chain mail I, I might be correct on that um and it's like really painstaking like you have to like make uh, one loop and then two loops and then three loops and then four loops and so making mini games around that sounds um we'll just say challenging <laughs> uh to either make it like realistic and then it's just really boring like um hey loop loop a circle like 10 times and then we just like uh after you've done like 10 loops it'll just like pause for like 30 minutes and then oh you've made a chain mail and that that feels kind of weird i think um or or like super gamify it um and be completely faithless to how it would actually be made so yeah i don't know specifically about like um like chest armor maybe helmets are like are something pretty pretty simple that we could make so i so again the the two considerations would be one um i forgot what the first consideration was but it was there and then the second one uh is kind of like how how we can gamify it how we can make uh mini games around it that type of thing um oh yeah the, the first one yeah yeah sorry joseph go for it uh, I wanted to ask uh, Umbrella. Do you have any like macro questions to understand what the game is to like have a better frame of mind for when we're talking about this? Uh, not at not at not to hand no. Okay, okay, <laughs> just curious. Again, um, again though, this is one probably our first of many conversations as well. So. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, I, I just wasn't sure whether we had mentioned the mini games and their purposes yet. I mean, oh, they were yeah, they, yeah. They, they were touched off, but I think that's actually what we were getting into as well. So, 
yeah, I like um for for people watching the video, um I'm referencing the the article we've already made. So if I like touch on something super briefly and it sounds like I'm assuming you already know what's in my head, that's because it was already covered in the article or like maybe some announcement or something. So if ever there's something confusing, um, or something that sounds like I'm glossing over, either Dean or Joseph, y'all can pause me and say like, hey, expand on like um what you're talking about. So like, yeah, mini games. Uh, I can expand on that more. If I'm just like, oh yeah, there's gonna be mini games. Just da da da. Um, I can expand on that more. Um. So yeah, just for both of y'all, just keep that in mind. Um, and then for for displays, uh, real quick to answer that question, um, yes. Uh, I mean, uh, the answer is uh, we want like some of your equipment somehow to like be put on a rack or like for helmets to be on dummies, like you said, or something like that. And um, for it not just to be strictly cosmetic, I'm not sure exactly what it will be. I don't want it to be super um super feature creepy slash adding extra scope where it where I have to make specific mechanics just for the uh just for mm. the display. But I would like um some buff, some like uh research tree or something to where like, oh like this research increases sale prices by five percent and I can say Oh, and by the way, these items, uh, when displayed, also increase sale price by, like, 1%, uh, or something like that. So it's not like we don't have to program, like, um, sale prices in one area and then, like, customer satisfaction in a different area. We can, like, we can double dip, um, on what the, uh, what the display things do. Um, hopefully that answers your question, Alex. Yeah. Yep, yep, that sounds good. Um... I suppose one question is I should have actually, mind you, uh, just a quick note to you guys. There was a little glitch with OBS where we lost like 15 seconds of audio, but it's not too big of a deal. It was during a window switch. So just to let all our viewers know. But um, back to my other question was, I think uh, we've seen we've seen a couple of games pretty much in this aspect before. We've seen like smithing style games, for example, you know, it's been touched off in Skyrim or like that's obviously first person. It's a whole different deal, but you know, we would we would have had like the likes of Diablo, where you socket items, even in Final Fantasy, for example, with materia. You know, we've had all these little kind of mechanics and aspects. What, in your opinion, what is the uh, comparison, or what will make Smithy, uh, by day, its own kind of unique game compared to? What's what's currently there, and and you know the type of fantasy games that are are there already, and offer these kind of uh, smith smithing aspects. Gotcha. Um, in the next ten seconds, Joseph, correct me if I'm wrong on the definition of this. Um, so, I think a lot of smithing games are very wide. Like you can do uh, a bunch of different. Uh, like you have like bronze iron uh gold silver uh steel etc and they're very wide you can craft a, a big variety of items but they're not very deep like uh basically the most you ever do is like uh mine iron mine coal and then um and then combine it you get steel and then you you do a thing so there's like maybe like three mechanics in, in terms of depth I, I have wide versus deep correct joseph in terms of game design did I, yeah yeah, it, it, like it's gonna be the cross between um, deep and cozy and casual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, our game is going to be a lot deeper. Um, it's not. Um, how let let me think how I want to say this. Like a lot of games, I see. It's not going to be so much focused on the customers. The customers are going to have a lot of mechanics, but it's not going to be just like, um, like I didn't want to compare the game to Diner Dash, for example, mm -hmm. because it's just like, oh, customer wants a hamburger, uh, click hamburger, click cheese, click tomato, click on customer. I want it to be more in depth, like if we're using the Diner Dash analogy of like, customer wants burger, you like. You have like a meat forming mini game, and then you have like a meat cooking mini game, and each mini game has its own timing as well. So like, uh, let's say the meat forming takes like 
five minutes and it locks your movement for five minutes after you do the mini game. The like plating and everything takes ten minutes and it locks like one character to that. And so it is a good cross section. We're going to have a lot of width as well, but also uh, a lot of depth. We want to focus a lot more on the depth of it, on specifically like how you're making this stuff, not just not just put resources in a good place and then throw resources at customer. Um, and then, like Joseph said, we want it to have some level of coziness. At the moment, um, I think we had a discussion of like coziness versus like um, uh, I don't want to say hard. We we had a good term like uh, synonymous with challenge, but um, like stressful challenge something around like that term, mm -hmm. and somewhere between like seventy to ninety percent coziness versus at, with like ten to thirty percent of of kind of the ch uh of kind of challenging and kind of stressing you out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, to in case people didn't read the article, um in when you're in the smithy itself you will time ma time management isn't isn't real time so you will never have to worry about like your actions per minute you're not gonna have to like spam click okay like my smithy just finished using the furnace i need to click on him to to start another mini game and i need to like micro the the rogue as well there's none of that it'll be super chill and you'll just have to think about your moves carefully um but at, like It'll be more strategy and more planning. You you won't have to micro at all. The microing will be in the in the caving, uh, but in uh in the smithy, it's like you have three characters. Let's say or no, you do have three characters. It's like past six p.m. You have three characters. Character one starts a mini game and they they start a mini game. They finish and that's their lo They lock their movement for twenty minutes. Character two same thing, but it locks it for thirty minutes. And character three, lo same thing, locks it for 40 minutes. And let's say a turn at the moment, we I think we have a turn at 10 or like 15 minutes. Let's just say it's 10 minutes for the sake of this. Um, you're, you're locked your movement at 6 p.m. You, you're like, hey, uh, you've done everything. Do you want to skip forward? And then uh, you you press skip. The clock jumps forward to, uh, to 6.20 now. And then character one can now do another different thing. So you don't like... Now it's 6.20, character one can move freely, do whatever you want. There are some uh, actions that don't require any time, like maybe like storing stuff maybe or like taking stuff out. Uh, maybe that type of stuff doesn't require any time. Um, and you can move freely. You don't need to pause and like think about every single decision. It's just, um, it's like it's already built in the game. The stress should be planning everything out. You shouldn't be stressed over microing or like your actions per minute or something. Um, so I guess the, the timing mechanics and time mechanics, the depth and, um, the mini games specifically, I think would be like the three things that separate our game. And then also like, I guess most games have like, most smithing games have like caving, um, but our game is going to do it better. I, I don't know what to, uh, our game, yeah, our game is going to have cool <laughs> caving and it's going to be, um, it feels like smithing it, it's either it's either caving is incidental and like smithing is the main game or like um uh you know like in skyrim like your your main thing is adventuring around and smithing is just like an incidental skill we want to have a good balance between both where neither feels incidental neither feels like oh i can just ignore this and like for caving i can just like buy stuff i don't want to do caving anymore or like for smithing uh yeah, I just want to like automate everything, and I can just like b like spam gems, spam like level thirty mobs, and uh like not worry about this. Uh, we want to have a good mix of both, I guess. So I, I guess that kind of uh touches all around what what uh, the preference is. Uh, do you have any comment there? Just just before I ask, uh, say my next comment. No, nope? okay. Um. Yeah, I kind of what you said about Caven, like I mean, that's kind of been mentioned a bit. I get a, I get kind of get remnants of Stardew Valley there, um, because it's not that you necessarily have to. You can solely make the choice to stick around and farm all day if you want, and yeah. use the money of, to buy things. So you can kind of do a little bit of path choosing if you want to, uh, which is which I suppose is a nice feature. Like a lot of people, don't get me wrong, but 
regardless of what game they play, I think a lot of people have this habit of sometimes wanting to do their own thing rather than be stuck on a... And I think gaming has kind of gone that way as well, where, you know, you're not on a set path, like, that you have to progress through to get to the end. Like, you know, there's this freedom there to kind of do what you want, hang around and just chill and play and, and do your own thing, which, you know, is a, is a nice kind of uh, aspect in addition to that. Um, also, um, uh, what was my next? Yeah, well, two, two or three more things. Caving, can we expect caving to be like, for, as I said, what for example, what we see in Stardew Valley or much more in depth, like because in, in Stardew Valley, for example, you have to fight off enemies, but at the same time, you have to uncover the, the gems and hopefully find one in the rocks, as, as we're aware. Um, I'll let you answer that first before I go into the next two parts. Yeah, I'll throw that to Joseph. Yes, so Stardew is actually one of the few big inspirations that I'm, gonna, that I'm pulling from for the mechanics. So it's not going to be like crazy in depth um but yeah it's, it's gonna be like kind of chilly it's got a mm-hmm. anything to add to that yeah um i think uh we, we talked about caving a lot i i hinted at like one thing um j- just to to have a fun little anecdote in the middle of uh in the middle of this to to kind of give a l- nice little breather um we joseph and i initially started on a gaming project like su- super while ago but it was just in kind of like the, we were just doing storyline basically i think we touched on a handful of mechanics but we were mostly doing um it was mostly like a story driven game mm-hmm. um and this was uh, maybe it was during the pandemic man like I, I like years ago don't worry about this but the the main the singular main point i want to i want to say about that is um if i say leblanc from league of legends dean do you know do you know what i'm talking about I recall, yes. Do you know, like, her W mechanic? It goes, like, your your character is here, you press W, it jumps, like, let's say five feet, yeah. and then you can press W again, and it jumps right back. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that, that type of thing. Um, I can't think of any games off the top of my head that uh, do it as well. Uh, I'm sure th- probably, like, Hades does some version of that, but basically just know character's here, press button, goes here, uh, can walk around freely and then press button. Like this location is saved for like ten seconds. Let's say you can walk around, whatever. Press the same button again. You port back exactly to where you were. Oh, like like kind of like trace or ult, I guess mm-hmm. would would be another example. So Joseph told me, I don't care what we do. There has to be one mechanic in this game. Everything else is negotiable. There has to be one mechanic in this game, and it's LeBlanc W. It needs to be this mechanic. So in mm-hmm. the caving. We're going to have that mechanic. Come hell or high water, everything <laughs> else can go to hell. There's going to be a LeBlanc W in uh, in the caving system. Whatever movement we figure out, great. It might be clicking. It might be WASD. But there's going to be a LeBlanc W in our game. That is my promise to you, the, the gaming community of the world. Um, so, yeah. I don't know why I expanded on that. Um, <laughs> It's a nice expansion. Yeah, I guess though. you just said if I had anything else to add, and I said, yeah, there's going to be that. <laughs> um, but yeah, l- long story short is um, caving is super, super early stages of kind of we're more throwing out ideas and saying like, yeah, that sounds like a cool idea. Like, yeah, that game is like probably a cool inspiration and stuff. The one thing we have set in stone, LeBlanc W. That's a, And there, there's going to be ore. Th- those are pretty much the two things we have set in stone. Okay, good. Uh, the other parts to that question were, um, pro, you, you hit off one, you said like, oh, you brief touched on, you, know, well, you just said like automation, but, uh, two parts there, progression, uh, are we looking at a, a leveling up system for your characters where their skills or certain skills can level up and they can do either more or better things or their improved quality on what they do, um, and, you mentioned automation. Are we looking at the option to be able to automate stations in 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 the shop, for example, in the smithy? Uh, to that, are we, are we able to automate certain things to, like that? Is that some, a possibility, or so um, we can go, so we can go and do it? Like for example, yeah, uh, we can we can go and do caving, like while the shop is doing something, for example. Yeah, yeah, I I understand. Um, so uh, let me let me write a note down in case we don't touch on this uh, again. Uh, where am I? Okay. Um. Cool. 
Um, so leveling up, uh, like I said, I want there to be maybe like a research tree and or a skill tree. Um, so I, I don't have a satisfying answer of just, yes, there, uh, yes, there will be some, some level of, um, <coughs> progression slash, um, passive upgrades, I guess. Um, and part two, I don't know what it'll look like. That, that's about all I have is we, we have it in our, in multiple documents that it should be in there and it, it should do something. Yeah, that's about it. Um, uh, another thing, I very much like the um, the like MMO mechanics of like the more you do specific thing, you more the more you level that up instead of um, instead of like the more you do general stuff, the more you just get like an extra level and you can allocate those points wherever. Mm -hmm. um, if possible, I would really like it to be like, oh, um, the blacksmith like did a bunch of stuff so he level he got more experience than the rogue that didn't do much rogue stuff he just like went to the market um i would like that i don't know if we're gonna do that um that's just like my overall philosophy is i would like something in that area i don't know what's gonna happen but yes there will be some sort of leveling and progression um i remember there was a third part to the question that i wrote down what was this oh automation <clears throat> um I'll say this the main the main critique i've seen a lot in in dave the diver um is you know the mini games are super fun but then you get to like automate everything um and like it kind of the the mini games become less impactful and like you're kind of automating the fun away and a lot of um i want to say a lot of games but i very much worry that like if we say oh you no longer have to play this mini game, or this mini game becomes like infinitely easier now that now it's kind of a chore slash um, like super easy. Um, I don't want to automate any of the fun away. I don't want to automate any of the mini games away. Mm -hmm. So for for that, I I want to say I don't want to automate. Um, I want to automate either no mini games or like very minimally, like for like. So, we have a concept of hard mini games versus soft mini games. A hard mini game would be like you go to the anvil, you have to play a hammering mini game. Like you see, like a UI for for uh, for a sword. Click, 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 click. Um, hey, Dixie, what's up? Honey, I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're we're talking about mini games and Smithy by Day. Um, Dixie Angel is from one of the games. Uh, one of the games I used to manage, um, she was in a focus group, and, and she's really cool, and we got a lot of good information uh, from her and got a lot of good stuff from, from the focus group. Um, but uh, where was it? So, yeah, so, uh, so a hard mini game is like uh, Anvil, you click on the thing, you do it like a specific, a mini game pops up, you do that. Where a soft mini game is something I'm calling like, oh, you go to the furnace, um, you put you put the iron ore in, and you like it doesn't lock your movement. The iron ore is there, and you kind of have like a thermometer somewhere, and it'll say like when the iron ore is hot enough or something, or like when the steel bar is hot enough or something. But mm -hmm. you can still walk around and like, um, like until you pass the turn, uh, nothing will happen. And like the turn is the mini game. Like the timing specifically is kind of like the the soft mini game, right? Mm -hmm. So. I'm more open to automating like the soft mini game aspects of it, um, but like the hard mini games, I don't really want to automate. And then to touch on something else, and if you want to branch more on like player freedom, I know you covered that. We can talk a lot about that. Um, you you said something like, oh yeah, like will we be able to like automate the smithy and just do caving or stuff? I don't want to force people. To um, and this was kind of a concern of Joseph's as well. I don't want to force people to like, oh, you have to cave every night. You have to cave for exactly six hours. There's no skipping. You have to manage the smithy exactly six hours or something. So, I do want some sort of. Uh, we both want kind of some sort of like skippable mechanic 
like, oh, hey, there's no more customers. I don't have any materials. Like, the market is closed. We can just skip to the caving and vice versa in caving. Um, maybe you can just straight up skip caving for a night or something, but it'll be really suboptimal. So we do want you to be able to have some level of skippability, but I don't think I ever want to, to automate um, that much of any of the smithy. Maybe <clears throat> maybe we intentionally make some mechanics a little more annoying, like managing certain customers is super annoying, so we can have like a greeter or something, um, or have like, oh, certain customers that have super complicated things, now we've unlocked a skill that instead of them coming and like it takes two hours for you to make this specific order they drop off their orders at the end of the night like you you lobby for some sort of legislation that allows people to drop off orders or something in, in the research tree something like that so very slight levels of automation is my answer to you um there is another another automation thing i'm not ready to touch on that yet but again very little automation. I I personally and both of us are very concerned about automating the fun away. We don't want to do that. We want you to have fun. We want the mini games to be fun. Uh, we want the caving to be fun. We don't want to automate that away. Uh, so yeah. I I know I just joined y'all, but how about mm -hmm. something like an ore box? Um yeah, I I think uh like anything that's like cumbersome or not fun like. Oh wow, it's so fun that like I only have like fifty um fifty storage spaces and now I have like an unlimited now like I can buy like a magical backpack or something. Like I have no problem with automating uh so, or, we're we're using the term automate as like a catch all term now. But yeah, like I have no problem with like taking that limitation away from the player or something like that, or like speeding that up a little bit or anything like that. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, Dixie, have you got any questions or? Well, I just joined y'all. I'm <laughs> yeah. just trying yeah, to Dix fill Dixie, myself in as you guys go along. <laughs> have you um Have you read the article I posted, Dixie? That that'll inform me if I need to explain stuff super in depth or not. Was it in the announcements? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I glanced through it. Okay, no, no problem. Okay, so yeah, I'll I'll be mindful to expand a little bit more on stuff. Um, but yeah, just to just a time warning, guys, we're uh, touching off of an hour and five minutes. Okay. Just uh, so. I'm fine. Yeah, I'm fine continuing this. If you want to break it up into like two videos as well, like a part yeah, yeah. one and two, that's fine. Uh, Joseph, I don't. Do you have any time limitations? My time limitation is like five hours. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, Bye. <laughs> uh, but Not yeah, I, I don't have any time limitations. Yeah. What about you, Joseph? Not currently, no. Okay, great. Yeah. I've, I've uh, got about forty-five minutes to my next meeting. Great. I've got great. about a uh, half hour. Okay, half hour. Great. Yeah. Yep. Um. So then, I, I, since you only have half an hour, I'm just going to touch on player freedom real quick. Um. My, my general philosophy is, um. I don't want to force the players to do anything, but if it's something I feel very strongly that, like, the player should do, like, the player shouldn't be able to just spam the market. Um, they should be, like, trying to cave and trying to, uh, like, make the resources on their own. So, like, let's say the market um, has, uh, like, can sell bars or ingots, uh, like steel ingots. Um, I would want to... Uh, I would want to encourage the player to, at, at the very least, buy the iron and the coal instead of just buying, like, the bar straight up. And if it's something we feel strongly about, I would like to heavily push the player in that direction, whether it be, like, to make something super expensive, super time inefficient or something, to where it's, like, a pretty obvious choice. But if you really want to, if you really want to torture yourself and say, like, oh, yeah, like, I'm only making like a 5% profit on these things where if I did it all on my own, I'd be making like a 50, 100, 200% profit on this. You can, but um, I don't want to force you to do almost anything. I think like the most forceful thing you will find in the game is either A, like obviously like, hey, it's really obvious like I should be doing this, but I have the option not to. 
or B, the storyline will probably be, like, the most forceful thing of, like, um, we do want some stuff that's, like, hey, you can, like, you can finish this quest at any time, or, like, hey, this guy, like, ca um, can show up at, like, um, after you do a certain amount of stuff, but doesn't, like, necessarily show up day seven exactly, but the storyline is going to feel a little bit more forceful than, um, than most of the game. But yeah, you'll you'll have a lot of freedom still. Yeah. Sounds good. Um I've kind of ran out of questions considering um I'll just ask is there anything that you feel that you want to expand on in particular or um Oh yeah, actually, Joseph, is there anything uh, you wanted me to touch on a little bit more? I know, like, I completely forgot that. Like, oh yeah, I should say that this is a three D game. Is there anything you'd like me to expand on, or you would like to expand on, for example? Uh, let's see. You went over the turns three tours. Do you? I'm going to browse our game design document in the meantime while you do that. See if I want to expand on anything from that. Actually, there, there's uh, one one mechanic I, I was curious about the uh, the day the the time slash day night cycle. What is the uh, what is how would I put it? How would I put the term? What is a day night cycle like? Is it because you said that there's there's a time limit that your your character will be will be locked out like from movement? So are we looking? You said like for example five hours. Are we looking at five hours of our time or are you looking at five hours of in-game time oh, whereas yeah, whereas yeah, one gotcha. where, whereas one minute to us is five is an hour in gameplay for example yeah I, i'm yeah let, let me um if i'm i'll try to be more that's a good uh good comment i'll try to be more clear when i'm saying like oh five minutes when i uh if i mean literally like five minutes of uh, play time or like five minutes of, like of the the in-game time i'll mm -hmm. try to be more clear on that so yeah um <clears throat> uh we're not sure how time will move when you're doing cadence. Uh, we've discussed either a like let's say there's like a um, like a a ten by ten cave, and you can explore that freely. And then when you move to uh, the the next part of the cave, that spends like ten minutes or so, ten in game minutes. Um, or b it that is the only real time part of the game. Um, where like where yeah you're literally moving and like as you move like the t the time like moves one minute one minute one minute one minute um we're not sure how cadence time will work however in the store um as an ex like our placeholder time right now this is slightly subject to change but this is our placeholder um at least your rogue maybe your rogue and your blacksmith wake up at six at six a.m. um they manage the store do like maintenance stuff go to the market and stuff for for two hours from six a.m. to eight um, 8 a.m. Then from 8 a.m. to let's say like 10 p.m. or something, uh, customers come in. You can service customers, great. Um, let's say at 6 p.m. your your mage wakes up and she can interact with customers or like do do her like alchemy stuff and whatever only for like four hours of the shopping day or like maybe six, maybe two, whatever. Um, and then uh, after 10, I'm not sure exactly how it will work. We'll will somewhat force the player to stop touching the shop because like the rogue and blacksmith will go to sleep or something and then the mage is free to go caving and again we don't know how time will work uh in caving but um i guess the only other thing is at the moment i personally like the time increment of 10 minutes and essentially think of 10 minutes as um as one turn essentially and so from 6 p.m to 10 p.m is however many hours that is and just uh, divide hours by six. No, multiply hours by six, and then divide by ten. You have, uh, you have however many turns you have in a day, essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can think of it like that. But uh, it would be really weird to say, "Hey, you're at turn one of two hundred and forty, so we'll <laughs> just divide it in time." It'll be, be a lot cooler, a lot uh, more intuitive, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully, that answers your question. I don't know if you had something more specific in mind that. Uh, you didn't understand about the timing and the in-game time. No, no, uh, that that explains it very well. I mean, while while you were explaining, it, I was kind of thinking of the uh, the conversion that they do in some games where uh, they'll give you a certain amount of hours during the day, but um, what they do is they I think it's 
one minute is equivalent to one second it's like, a, it, like mm, to, yeah, to get the arrows rolling you know and it gives yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. It no, gives... nothing like that except for the caving we're not sure how that will work but like okay. in the smith there's nothing like oh one second is one minute one minute is one hour or anything yeah there, there's nothing like that yeah yeah in the okay. blacksmith smith yep no that's fine that's perfect uh that's yeah that's pretty much all i have uh at the moment, so yeah, I'm uh, open to any free comments or uh, explanations or what anything further you guys want to add. Uh, I'm just going over the game design document now, so um, there's there might be like two minutes of silence, but yeah, I'm just going to take a look at that, see if I want to expand on anything. Um, also, also just uh, when we're when we're done here, I'll I will stop the recording, but we're obviously free to stick around and have a quick uh, sure. a quick chat after so yeah and dixie you're also welcome to uh to ask anything um is this, is this gonna be like a single player or multiplayer type game uh almost certainly exclusively single player <laughs> um i really like leaderboards personally um and i'm a big fan of the speedrunning community so having Having something like leaderboards or high scores or something, I don't. I wouldn't want like a a speed running integration. That's because I don't like taking a turn based game and speed running it. But maybe having something like oh, like make a thousand silver in the shortest amount of turns or something on a leaderboard could be really cute or something. That's that's the most I'm thinking about multiplayer stuff. Also, that that is not even in the game design document, so that is Giga Omega subject to change. Uh, but that's just something I personally like. Um, also, I guess the the mini games is something we're working on in the near future. Um, those are somewhat, or no, those are definitely subject to change. Um, I got a bunch of like baseline. Hey, like hammer and anvil, like hammer certain parts of the thing. Um, but we want to make our mini games super, super fucking sick. So, um, yeah, we're going to spend a lot of time on that. Um, yeah, because that's that's like the bread and butter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose you could look at like multi mini games to one to one station. Like for example, with the with the forge, uh, you know, one mini game could be pump the bellows. The other mini game could be like rotate the sword for heat on 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 side or something like that. You know, stuff like that. I mean, I I like the idea of the mini games, and then I'm kind of saying I I'd feel very bad like if it was just one mini game to get something done, but multiple mini games for each like portion of a build or or an item creation, for example, in one station. You know. Yeah. It's a chain. Yeah, it could be like. Like you a finish one mini, mini chain it. chain of production. Yeah, 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 exactly, Dixie. Yeah. Oh, um, I guess one one thing I'll I'll touch on real quick, super, um, super base. Um, also one of, I guess kind of for the the shop UI, uh, and customers, one of the inspirations, uh, for if anyone knows this game, is um. I believe it's called Potion Crafter Alchemy Simulator. Am I correct on that? Yeah, I is, like it. Is oh, that, okay. Perfect. Is that the thing I've seen videos of where the guy just like throws the skull out the window and it screams? I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, there's some, there's um, some, there's some VR, there's some VR game I've seen videos it's not of, a like. VR. Oh, is it not? No, because there's there's some VR game I've seen like where like the guys in, in in front of an alchemy desk like crafting potions and this skull is talking to you, telling you how to do it. But I've seen like. I've seen these people like abusing oh, this. Oh yeah, yeah, I think it, no, no, no. This is this is an older game. Oh, okay. Uh, maybe like when was this released? Uh, twenty twenty one. Okay. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what one of my inspirations um for like the the customer side is is that game. Um, but specifically, what I wanted to touch on is there's going to be some end game paths. Um, such as like um. Uh, we'll say for like the so in Potion Crafter, um, the the like end game task I, I haven't beat the game by the way, um, is like oh like you're passively you're just making more and more gold you're upgrading your store you're getting more stuff and whatever, um, but there's kind of like a background end game goal of crafting the philosopher's stone and like one 
one part of like and you're just trying to make a big machine to craft the the philosopher's stone so like one part you'll buy like one part from a merchant you'll find another part like exploring another part from like uh crafting <coughs> five different potions and like uh combining them or something and so I would like to implement something like that. So, for example, the mage, something similar of like, oh, you know, like after a month, she like she um, divulges to her goal of like, you know what? Now that we've settled down in this smithy, I think I would like to make a philosopher's stone and like just make some really cool stuff with it or like save the world with it or just be really selfish with it. I don't know what her motivations are yet, but something like that. And we're like, hey, she finds like one part of one part of the machine and like caving one part like a customer gives it one part uh she makes like her own wand another part she like uses her enchantment table her alchemy table that type of thing and i want to have that but three times so like one like the rogue wants a really cool dagger uh the the blacksmith wants a cool suit of armor and like the the mage wants like the philosopher's stone or something like that um so um... yeah I, I want something like that and that'll both be like a money sink like it do, it's kind of cosmetic it might give you like a small buff but like you do have a big money sink uh which is something i'm very concerned about i hate when games just like after you make x amount of silver like after a while money becomes irrelevant i want you to always be sinking money and always um at the very least have like hey like between a thousand silver and five thousand silver money is irrelevant but now that I have 6,000 silver, I can spend 5,000 of it on, like, a golden statue or something. Um, so, yeah, that, that's kind of something I wanted to touch on a little bit. Uh, again, super early stages. I briefly touched on it in our document. Uh, probably my last question that I can think of. Do we have uh, a lore or base story to, to the game? Like, how these characters came together? Or is it just, are we just going to get, like, a... A, a, a straight in like with a little a little flavor story text saying uh you 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 guys have banded together to run a smithy like or will the three characters have their own stories of how they came to me and form this little like merry band of of a uh, smith smithy smithy owners yes we there will be there will be a big chunk of story it's not i don't want it to be that um I don't want it to be like, hey, you're, here's your three characters. You like smithing. You stop. You stopped adventuring, and now you like smithing. Have fun. Okay, bye. I don't want it to be like that. Mm -hmm. I want it to be a pretty, pretty big chunk of my focus. Um, is going to be storyline, um, storyline and lore. I don't know how. Lore is really fun to, or like, um, like world building is very fun to me. But I could lose my mind world building, and it will add a, just a very little bit to it. But there will be some level of world building, probably way more than is needed. Uh, but there will be a lot of storyline as well to it. Um, customers will will give you storyline elements uh, of like um, like let's say. Let's say let's say this is a hard a hard story like not a temporary event this is a permanent event. I'm not saying this is, but let's say for example like on day 7 are like we have it scripted that on day 7 um your uh, your wood supply guy says, "Oh my god, there's like a new tax on wood and now wood is now permanently like 20% more expensive or something." So we want like customers to come in give you real information, uh give you like actionable stuff um may maybe like um permanent changes or like long term like hey like uh for a month like this will change or stuff uh some quest lines that type of thing um the i don't want to spoil anything we're thinking about in the story um i will just regurgitate the exact same thing i said and you will not know what it means until we release uh at the very least our early access um is i think for the storyline uh attack on titan fans will be very happy with the storyline that's all i will say all right that, i i want to just quickly add that uh the story is going to be like the backbone of the entire game but it's not going to be a core part of the entertainment medium 
our our, yeah. our core part is going to be pretty much it's just the gameplay and and the story will be be the vessel for it. It won't be like yeah. a massive storyline will be pushing you, but yeah, it yeah. won't be the main thing. Um I will qualify that I think the the like end of the game the storyline will be a little bit more of the entertainment factor, but yeah, everything else is going to be like kind of random eventy slash not random ev- kind of like not <coughs> literally random events like an event happens and now like you're doing something else or like new customer comes in and like you've unlocked a mechanic or that type of thing but yeah like backbone is a very good analogy for it okay um yeah that all sounds good uh i've pretty much no questions left so i think that's it awesome um our tutorial is going to be good. The, um, in case people were wondering, we were deciding between our tutorial being bad or good. We decided on it being good. Um, yeah, I, give me like 60 seconds to, to scroll. Um, our, our story is also going to be good. So is our plot. Um, I made some icons. Now they're better icons. We got good UI. Um, oh, oh, yeah. Um. Can I talk about the inventory system that you're working on real quick, Joseph? Sure. Um Oh, I guess this will be for next time since we're 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 leaving in a sec. Um there there is going to be I, I touched on this, like there is going to be a uh a quality system. So like if you really screw up a mini game, the the sword is going to look a little more wonky or like whatever piece of equipment is gonna look a little more wonky and um sell for less um or sell for more if you do better alternatively whatever um and you're going you're not going to be forced i didn't even think about this but joseph brought it up you're not going to be forced into like hey you start one piece of equipment and now you are forced to um to like make that piece of equipment like from start to finish you can't like you either make it or like you scrap it. You can't like have it in intermediate stages. I didn't th- I didn't even realize that is actually like kind of complicated to to make and to like store that data. Um, but yeah, we will have some way to like store X amount of items to where um, like it'll say like, hey, I already like hammered it, but I didn't sharpen it, and it'll be in your inventory, and you'll have like. Uh, you can like hover over and you say like, "Hey, sword one, like I've hammered but not sharpened it. Hammer two, I've done everything, but um, or sorry, um, sword two, I've done everything except uh, assembled it and whatever." And Joseph is currently working on that right now. Uh, it's pretty complicated, but it'll be good, and you'll have the freedom to to make like um, it, if you for some reason think like you want to um. Today, you just want to sharpen swords. You don't want to assemble everything, and you just have, like, five blades that aren't assembled and aren't sharpened. You can just do the sharpening minigame. Like, day 11 is your sharpening minigame day for whatever reason. You can do that if you want. Um, Yeah, that's the only other thing I wanted to touch on. And we can touch more on the quality system uh, next time. Yeah, I just chuck it back into the forge and start over. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, or you can do that. That is always an option, yeah. We want we want you to be able to, to recycle or like say, "Ooh, I really screwed up. Let's uh may- maybe um th- there should still be some punishment. Um maybe maybe the time sink is punishment enough. Um but I feel like that would be really hard to balance around that. So maybe have like an extra punishment like, "Hey, it requires like two bars to make a sword and if you like scrap it, um you'll have to use one extra like bar of steel to to make the sword like a scrap sword plus one bar or like you could be half resources or something but yeah we we do want to have like some sort of recycling thing all right yeah um i think that's it i think we're all good uh are you guys happy to leave it there yeah i'm great went well yeah. Perfect. Uh, well, look on that note. Thanks very much, guys. Um, I'm just going to stop the record now. So, cool. guys, thanks Bye, for guys. watching. Thanks for oh, watching, join, guys. Join the Discord. Join if you if <laughs> yeah. you need information, 
Discord's got it. You want it? Discord's got it. Join the Discord. Dean, link the Discord at the bottom of the of the YouTube or something. I will. Uh, jo indeed. Join our Discord. Smile. That that's where all the information is. And so there's so many cool people here. I will indeed. No worries. All right. Cool. All right. But I'm probably still the oldest. <laughs> <laughs>